narrow spot right there. He, you know, when he bulks up on me like that, I'm not going to think forward. I'm going to move that hip. I could have started fighting him then and beating him across it and spurred him, but we would have had a fight. So that's why I just picked up a rate right there. And he's refusing. I'm going to pick up, move that hip, get his feet moving, and walk him out of it. Think about getting their feet moving, not so much on what we're doing, but the feet. And once I get his feet moving, if I direct him right, he's going to go where I put him. He's a pinionated horse, like right there. See, he wants to back. I'm just going to pick up his nose, do that hip. my mind right then, I had him going over it. Because I'm going to look ahead. I'm not going to, he's going to try to rush over like he just did. And I'm going to be first tell you, I'm going to grab his mouth. I'm going to let him know he cannot bulk over it and bolt. I'm not going to have a bolting horse. So that's a little bit tidbit here and there. I mean, it's pretty simple. Number one, you got to remember, think about getting your horse's feet moving first. That's first and foremost. And don't think so much you putting them on the bridge to your tire obstacle. They got to put themselves on it. And that's what I was doing. I let him do it. And I'm glad to see him bulk a little bit here on this one. Because I can show you what I've done over on Teeter Totter. I would have done the same thing. If he stopped, I would have picked his nose up, and I'm going to really move that hip. Not saying, pretty please, boy, let's move that hip. Hey, heck no, I'm going to move that hip. I want that hip moving. I want him to spend some energy and let him know that I'm going to control his feet. He's not going to control it. So, that's it. Simple. I like said, oh, saw a horse out there on Achilles. He was behind the camera. So, you know, just take one step at a time. Focus on getting the feet moving. That's the main thing. Keep them on top of that object. And um, then they'll go on it real quick if you do that. And like me, I did my groundwork with him first and got him over it which made it easier but I could have did it in the saddle but I just wanted to show both ways uh, preach for a day take right back to it um, next time you go over it you go to that corner you're going to shorten your right frame she's going to try to go. Horse is a creature of the habit. And we'll have Kelly shorten that right rein because I know that mare is going to try to veer off to the left. So she got to ride that horse. You know, right there, Kelly corrected her and stopped her. You know, I'm amazed how people don't correct their horses. Especially if doing this finger cotter stuff and everything. Because horses, like I said, are a creature of the habit. You can probably ride her in that. I can't get it on her though. Oh, okay. Well, my other one's sitting on the saddle horn, right by the, by the right by the hitching rail. By the round hand or up in the. Oh, right by the hitching rail itself. Good kill. Not better. Now, this is a prime example. This mare, I've ridden her on the trail. She's not a bad mare on the trail. But the first day we put her on the teeter totter, yeah, she wasn't having no part of it. <laughs> and we worked through it and we worked through it. And then I had Kelly working through it. So it's not good enough for me.
me to do it. The owner's got to do it. And also, an interesting tidbit, this mare is not supposed to like a bit. It's funny, I don't see no head tossing or anything else going on. Whoever was trying to ride this horse, this is one of the horses Kelly adopted. Whoever was trying to ride this horse, it wasn't the bit, it was her hands. That's what it's telling me. Because I've had three horses come from that area. They had a similar acquaintance. Every horse supposedly didn't like the bit. And all three of them, every one of them liked the bit. I mean, didn't care one way or another about a bit, I should say. So, you know, I did this in stages. I did the teeter-totter and then the bridge and everything. That's why I do everything in stages. And, uh, you know, it to me, me, and Kelly had this discussion earlier. Yes, to me, it's a piece of cake. It's just ride the horse. That's it. Keep the horses moving. Ride the horse. Give the horse direction. It's that simple. You know, don't go brain dead and wonder why your horse is 60 foot down there when you didn't do nothing to correct it. So, as Kelly is going back and forth over the petite bridge. Oh, please, yes. <laughs> Kelly wants to give her input. <laughs> so we'll, we'll let her. Um, I took 10 riding lessons from another riding instructor and, you know, I've been off riding a horse for like 25 years and, um, I took two lessons from David and learned more than I did in 10 from the other instructor. And I went back for another lesson because I had paid for one in the, after my two with David and the instructor exclaimed, wow, what happened? You've gotten so much better. And uh, so I just really think the world of David and his um, instructions. And like other instructors, uh, quite honestly, I'm kind of afraid or I was a little afraid, you know, of riding and, but David, you know, he won't let me quit like other instructors would let me quit. He's never put me in a position where I felt afraid, um, but he's just so, done so much for my self-confidence. And um, it's like after I get done with the lesson on, with David, I feel like I'm on like this runner's high, like a horse's high, and it just lasts me all week. And it's just so fabulous. So that's my, that's my skill. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> Cheers, sweetheart. Anyway, yeah, this will be a long ending this time. <laughs> oh well, we all know I get long winded once in a while. As I always say, be true to the horse, they'll be true to you. Be true to yourself and foremost. And when you do that, people, you'd be surprised what doors open up. Because that's the bottom line. If you're true to yourself and in all aspects of your life, doors open up. Sure, old doors close, but the new ones open up, and 99% of the time, them new doors are better ones. There, I like that phrase better. So, with that thought, uh, April 23rd, I mean 24th, 25th, Dallas area, go on my main page, scroll down to the clinic schedule, you'll get the information, how to contact the people, and where it's at, and such, so forth. So, hope to see y'all there. So I can pay for my motel room. But anyway, y'all take care and God bless. <laughs>